the Print Hacking Primer will help you print at home using various tools and other hacks. Dry point tools, ice pick, screwdriver, smaller the better. A screwdriver with replaceable heads will provide you with several options. An awl, A-W-L, or a punch. Pottery tools, or dental tools, which need to be modified. Grind the tips off on the sidewalk. Tape up the tool after so it's easier to draw with. Look inside junk drawers to find more tools. Facial grooming tools. Make your own scribe using a drywall screw and a cork. An eraser is a common tool that sharp objects can be embedded within. I call this the eraser burin. This particular one uses a paper clip. The goal is to stabilize the paper clip so that you can scratch with it. Sewing needles also work very well for this. Take care not to stab yourself during this process. This type of clickable eraser allowed me to insert a needle inside of it and use it more like a scribe. Maybe you only have a popsicle stick and a paper clip. You can tape that all together. It's quite an effective scribe. Small wire brushes. These are micro wire brushes used for scratching and you can harvest them from barbecue brushes or other wire brushes. Here is a sand-based eraser. Sandpaper can be taped to the end of a pencil to make a really effective scratching tool. There are a lot of tools out there from scratch tools for cleaning keyboards and electronics. These grit dipped tools are helpful but could be made from scratch from popsicle sticks, glue, and sand. A used toothbrush goes a long way. Lighters are fairly common and can be turned into a wonderful tool called a roulette. First we have to disassemble the lighter so that it won't start things on fire. This is a big lighter so you'll remove the metal top and then the flange, which will allow you to then take the rotating wheel out, remove the spring and the flint, place the wheel back inside, and then replace the metal shield. You now have your own custom roulette. These tools come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but are very expensive. So this is a great hack. And now a tool for erasing. This soda canister works really well as a burnisher for plastic or metal. Relief mark making tools, tacks, a bent screw, another type of screw, a screw missing its head, an L pin, a nail, or paper clip bent into a difficult to carve shape. You will need something heavy, like a hammer, to make impressions into the relief substrates. This hammering method will allow you to make a variety of unique marks, both expressive and controlled. Maybe you don't need a carving tool at all. This tool for carving is called a bread lamb. It's just a blade embedded in some sort of sturdy material. Here I'm using a wine cork. I drink plenty of wine, so I have plenty of wine corks around. Cut into the wine cork to make a recess for the razor blade to go into. Remove the material and very safely slide that razor blade into place. Be sure to cover that blade. It's very dangerous having such a sharp blade. Paper and tape does a great job. Here's another wine cork variation, this time using a plastic wine cork and razor blades. A shaving razor. These razors are ideal because they're quite bendable. Using pliers and a lighter, you want to suspend the blade and heat it at the location that you want to bend it. Take your time and heat the blade until it's very warm. It won't bend unless the metal is hot. Stabilize the blade and keep bending it for a while. 
After a little bit, it'll have a slight bend, but not enough to be useful. So heat it again. Make sure it's very warm. Stabilize the blade and bend it. Cut the blade in half. Make it easier to handle. Heat the blade again. This time, really exert some force. And make sure you're wearing protective eyewear. One more round of heating and then bending. The metal is nearly in the shape that we want it to be. Comparing this to the tool I've already made, I can see that I need to make incisions for where the blades go. I trim the blade down slightly, make the incisions, and use a pair of pliers to help me place the blade safely. Be careful, take your time. It is very easy to cut yourself. Rather than use my fingers, I'll use the table to push that blade deeper. Glue the blade in place. You don't want it coming out while you're carving on the substrate. Traditional substrates for dry point include copper and zinc, aluminum and plexiglass. But let's look at other options. Tetra Pak, look for that label. It's a really great substrate for both relief and intaglio. Scratches really well. You just have to cut the package apart, take your time, and harvest those inside beautiful, shiny substrates. The size is limited, but you get what you pay for. Like Tetra Pak, milk containers work very well. Look at how many substrates you can get from the classic takeout container. So much of what we recycle or throw away could be, or repurposed, as a substrate for dry point, plastic works great for dry point from salad containers to plastic from picture frames or other repurposed plastics that you will find in your day-to-day -day living. Sintra is a type of plastic that's used in the sign industry and is very common. CDs and DVDs, a great way to repurpose old media. Aluminum is ubiquitous. You find it everywhere. Why not use it? It's not easy to cut up an aluminum can. Use a sharp blade and take your time. Try not to dent the metal too much. Aluminum can be incredibly sharp, so take care while you're doing this. In order to use the substrate, you'll need to tape it down to a board. An old Teflon cutting board works great for dry point as well. Some very common relief substrates include Easy Cut or Safe Cut, Linoleum, we have the burlap on the back, Pine, Classic Pine from the hardware store, some plywood could be from the hardware store or the art grade variety. But looking into found substrates for relief, gracers, meat trays, more Tetra Pak, if you have a sharp tool, carves very well. Sintra, mat board, more ply, the better. Other pieces of wood from around the house, the back of an old sign or a shelf. What kind of fabric can you use to wipe a dry point at home? Traditionally, we would use tarlatan, but what do we have? Maybe material from an old Halloween costume, a type of plastic wiping material. How about the old athletic injury wraps? These are found in nearly every medicine cabinet, are smooth, and have a lot of fabric. Old t-shirt material, an old rag, anti-link cloth, a used scotch bright pad, and any smooth plastic that could be used for surface wiping. Also, line paper, newsprint, or a glossy paper works great. Other inking tools, like brayers, are rather specialized, but we can find tools around the house that will help. These tiny little casters are made of rubber and would attach to the bottom of appliances. 
I'm screwing them onto a wine cork. Another common found object would be a skateboard wheel. These are harder than your traditional brayer. Using a pencil, you can create a handle and the possibility of creating a double sized brayer, or should I say, roller. Even more simple, a roll of tape could be used to replicate the method of an inking ball. A stamp pad could be used with an eraser to ink up the substrate, although this technique would be time intensive. Plastic from salvage containers will work great for an ink palette. An ink knife can be replicated by using a spatula, mat board, or any type of plastic card that's been decommissioned. A Bondo applicator works well. When using mat board or chipboard, remember to continually cut down the pieces. Cotton swabs for precise inking, toothbrushes. A small plastic ruler can be used as a palette knife. You can also make your own palette knife out of some of the salvaged plastic. Give yourself a nice handle, use some tape, make it fancy. Sharpening tools is a very special skill set. Usually it requires a special tool. Here we have a slip strop, but at home you won't have that. So let's investigate some other options. If you have a ceramic plate or bowl in your cabinet, you can use it to help sharpen your tools. Really, we're removing burrs. This is a very crude form of sharpening, but the ceramic will work. If you have a fine grade of sandpaper, that will also help you polish your blade. An old leather belt works wonders. If you don't have a polishing compound, consider some toothpaste. Nearly all relief carving tools can be sharpened using this method. If you have a very small tool, consider using the edge of the belt. Hand printing tools. Here's a barren, a very modern looking one. Bottle toppers are like miniature versions of barons. Cabinet hardware, like drawer pulls, work very well. Using a screw, we can create a slightly larger handle for this drawer pull using a cork. Much more ergonomic. Every house has a light bulb. Light bulbs work exceptionally well as a baron. Spoons are obviously the most classic hand printing tool to use. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Massage tools work surprisingly well. Here we have a roller ball and a thumb enhancer tool. Here's a simple baron that one can make using a push pin and a wine cork. Taking this one step further, we can use a glass bead rather than a pin. Use a sturdy glue, keep it in place using some tape after you glue it. Reinforce the glass bead with tape after it's dry. Glass beads are fairly common and a piece of wood is also common. You can glue the two together to create a handheld baron. I was able to find half round pieces of wood which fit into your hand nicely. The caster is another very handy hand printing tool for both woodblock and dry point. Sand the seam off of the wheel before printing. A soda charger baron is something that can be very useful as well. Take three or more soda charger containers that have been emptied, tape them together, make sure all three containers are level. Voila, a triple pressure point printing tool. Rolling pins are not for only making cookies. You can make prints with them, but you may consider investing in a pin press. Much more heavy duty. Paper at home. What do we have? Brown paper bags. Try to salvage as much as you can. Printer paper, notebook paper, newsprint, parchment paper, or wax paper. We may have a sketchbook. 
different types of sketchbook paper, different thicknesses, different weights. Maybe we have some paper samplers. Those are always exciting to experiment with. Thinner rice papers work well, as do medium weight rag papers like lightweight or heavyweight, but don't use a heavy BFK. You can also stain your papers with tea or other pigments. To prepare paper for printing, you may have to soak the paper. A deep baking dish or a spray bottle works very well for this. Another way to prepare paper is to create a damp pack. Say you wanted to print an edition of 10, you would sew five sheets of paper and then interleave them with dry sheets of paper in a closed bag overnight. Printmakers love their deckled edge. You can use saws to replicate that deckled edge. It will be a little rough so you can smooth it out after. A hard edge metal ruler works wonders as well. You may consider using some of the hard edge plastic you've been saving. It can be sharp stuff. Just remember to fluff that deckel. Inking relief. Let's use the small little brayer we made earlier. For this print, we will use the Caligo Safe Wash Relief Ink. Here I'm using a piece of mat board as my palette knife and a salvaged piece of plastic from a salad container for my palette. This handmade micro brayer is making quick work of all the tiny details I have to ink up in this lino cut. Let us ink up a larger block now, a woodcut made on plywood, using, of all things, a skateboard wheel as my brayer. The durometer of this urethane is quite hard it's not like your traditional soft brayer. This is a very fun tool to use. Here we have a small relief print made on shiny cardboard. Using my handmade brayer, a small block moves around, so I tape it in place and continue inking. Just a few passes and this small block will be inked up. Let's print the little block we just inked up. Using the pushpin baron, I'm applying firm pressure. This substrate worked great. Here's a close-up. Now let's move on to the lino cut. We'll use the wooden rolling pin. Here I am printing on your typical printer paper. Be sure to check on your progress when printing. I'm a little let down by the wooden rolling pin, so I've moved on to one of the bottle tops. This actually gives me a lot more control and pressure. Time to move on to the wood block. I will print using a light bulb. I am quite surprised on how good a printing device a light bulb is. I highly recommend it. On to dry point inking. Here's a dry point on milk carton container using a Charbonnel ink. When I print at home, I like to put ink right on the plate. Here I'll cut up an old plastic card so I can spread the oil-based intaglio ink all over the plate. Even though I'm wearing gloves, I like to keep my hands clean so I wipe them off. Work the ink into the recesses. Using Athletic Wrap as my tarlatan, I wipe the excess ink off the plate and use Q-tips to bring out the highlights. Inking up my next plate, I have plastic from a picture frame and Caligo Safe Wash etching ink. Spreading ink all over the surface using a plastic card and again rubbing that ink into the grooves. This time, I will use a very heavily used Scotch-Brite pad. Next, I will use a smooth paper to do some paper wiping. Don't push hard when you're paper wiping. Let the paper drag across the surface. Finish up with a few more Q-tips. It's much harder to print by hand versus printing on a press. So give yourself a little bit more ink tone on the plate and be mindful that you may not capture all of the details. And remember to clean those bevels.
To print dry point, you'll need to wet your paper. Here I'm soaking a sheet of Reeves Lightweight. On top of it, I will be soaking a sheet of Masa paper. I'll only be soaking the Masa for about one minute. Here I am setting up the printing space. When I take the Masa paper out of the water tray, I let it drip dry. Then I blot it dry. I don't want to see any moisture on that surface of the paper. Here, I'm carefully setting down my printing paper, then placing a piece of barrier paper over the top. This is waxed paper. It will protect the thin, delicate masa from being ripped. I'm using a massage tool called a roller ball to pull this impression. Now it is time to take the lightweight Reeves paper out of the water. It's been soaking for about 10 minutes. It's really important there is no standing water on the paper that will resist the ink. Placing the plate, fully inked up and the paper on top. Now using the caster, a very, very popular method of printing by hand. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Akua Pin Press. I'm a big fan of this. It's very heavy duty, doesn't require as much pressure as the other methods, and the impressions come out very rich with ease. 